Okay, I think it's pretty fair that before we start, I get something out of the way. I don't generally relate to the term less is more, clearly. I spend my day-to-day -day life literally piling the accessories high, spreading the butter thick, and ordering yet another shot at the bar. So it's a bit tricky when it comes to that inevitable point in a conversation I'm having with someone I haven't seen in a while, and they say to me, how's business? I say, yeah, great, we're having a ball. And the next question is always, and I mean always, when are you going to open more? Now, I get why they always ask me that question. More shops, expansions, bigger, getting bigger. For years and years, we've been trained to equate the definition of success with getting bigger. Maybe for men, it's a biology thing. <laughs> but what they're saying to me when they do ask me, when are you going to open more? What they're saying is that essentially, what we're doing is not enough. What we are is not enough. That to be successful, we need to be bigger. To be more. Well, I say ram it. Right now, you're probably thinking I'm the worst business person that's ever <laughs> lived. And by today's standards, you're probably right. But I'm just not hungry for more, simply for the sake of more. But I am thirsty. <laughs> I'm thirsty for excellence. I'm thirsty for community. I'm thirsty for change, for creativity. I'm thirsty for global success. Global, no less. I'm thirsty to be the best. I'm thirsty for success. But why does that have to taste like more? I am sick of hearing people uh, tell me that they're going to take over the world. Well, I will stop you there, honey, because it is not yours to take over. Imagine if we stopped, and for a second, stopped focusing on trying to take over the world, and instead focused on perfecting our very own little world. Now, I use the word little there perhaps wrongly, because whilst my world is pretty small in the grand scheme of things, from my perspective, it's the biggest thing going. Imagine we stopped absorbing subconsciously definitions of success that are thrust upon us every day, essentially other people's definition of success. And instead, we started, instead of doing what we think we should be doing, we started doing what we actually wanted to be doing. My favorite piece of advice that I try to live by and spend a lot of my time throwing on other people is create the life you want to live. Well, that's what happened when I opened Tropical Popco. When I was writing the business plan, and even now, five years later, when I'm making any decisions, the question I always go back to is, does the decision I'm about to make fit in with the idea of the type of society I want to live in? And that was mostly inspired by a quote I read in a book, uh, An Economy is Not a Society, by Dennis Glover. And he said, we must abandon the idea that a better society is simply about offering individuals more dollars in their pocket. What we desperately need is a conversation about the type of lives, type of jobs and communities we want for ourselves and for our families. And the more I reflected on that, the more it became clear to me that the role of an economy should be to facilitate a society and not the other way around. We're not here to fuel an economy. We're fueling an economy so that it can fuel us. The economy of more has allowed wealth and power to be funneled up and concentrated in the hands of a minority. And we justify it with the explanation that it's okay because, sure, success equals getting bigger, expansions, more shops, more. It feels like every time we read one of those magazine articles, you know the ones, grow your business or sell your business for millions and billions and zillions in a year that we forget the fundamental principle of what it means to be here, to live. I've seen people give up everything, and I mean absolutely everything, because they were so busy working on leaving a legacy behind. When they were dead, they were giving up living for what they were going to achieve when they died. Now, I don't know about you, but that just puts my head into a spin. We're so focused on growing our businesses and to sell them for more that we're losing the ingredients that make up a business that sustains your soul for a lifetime. We're losing artisan trades and highly skilled trades. We're losing community. 
So for me, I decided that every day in Tropical Papaka will count, not one day. I wanted to be able to live the day-to-day -day experience of what it meant to go in there and talk, laugh, learn, teach, create with the girls and our clients. Once I took away the pressure of getting bigger, the floodgates were wide open to see what we could do to make things better. What could we add? The obvious addition as a nail bar was a nail polish. However, much to my accountant's dismay, the ethics of more struck once again. I was raging. Unless we opened up our own production facility, the potential to create our own polish range was limited to curating the colours and branding it up, not creating. We'd literally be repackaging a product that already existed, not bringing anything new to the world, no innovation. We'd literally be adding, using our name to make it worth buying. We're already back to the more for the sake of more, not more for the sake of excellence. Just selling things, any things. Not creating, just selling. Now, before you write me off as a hippie, <laughs> hardly, um, don't. Because I realized that you can have excellence, community, change, creativity, global recognition, success. You can be the best. All the things I'm thirsty for without being hungry for more. And make millions. Whenever I start to question myself, which is inevitable when you think about all the messages of growth and uh, apparent success that are thrown at me every day, I think about the sadly soon to be closed Colette. One shop in Paris, 28 million turnover. One shop. Yet they have the best collaborations, projects, products, parties, all run by a mother and daughter. Closer to home, you have the gorgeous tea, or brand Barry's Tea, a family-run business down in Cork, turning over millions. You see, we're now in a position where we have access to global knowledge that we can use to optimize the local experience. We can have world-class situations in local villages, ideally created by the people in the village. We can dream and achieve big and stay small. By being excellent, you're enough. We can escape the economy of more. So today, right now in fact, I want you to start thinking not how you're going to take over the world, that's not yours to take over, not how you're going to grow, not how you're going to be more. I want you to start thinking about creating the life you want to live and whether that fits in with your idea of the type of society you want to live in. We all want to live in. Thanks. <laughs>